last week announced my New Year's resolution, a powerful action where I will be meditating every single day as opposed to just three or four times a week. And I'm really committed to making this change and making this change in a sustainable way for the long term. And that's where the challenge really becomes in the past in my own life is to make that change, whether it's to eat less or to exercise more or to find a better job, whatever that powerful action that you so desire, the challenge has always been to sustain that change for the long period of time, right? And I'm sure many of you can relate to this where you've decided to make a change in the new year, but then by February or March, you're reverting back to your old habits and negative ways, and you're not really making that change or that change doesn't become sustainable. And so in my video about emotional eating, I talk about why we can't make this sustainable change is because our subconscious mind in our bodies as opposed to our conscious mind in our mind is so addicted to the emotions of the past. And we're so addicted to those emotions that it's hard to make that sustainable change. So in order to make that desired change sustainable for the long term, we have to break free from those addicted emotions from the past. So today I want to share with you some of the mind techniques that I use in my own personal life to be able to really change that subconscious mind in our body to make the sustainable change. So before I share with you my mind training techniques, I want to show you this chart again, which I showed you in my emotional eating video. And the reason why I want to show you this chart again is because it's really important to understand the concept behind this subconscious and conscious mind. So you can really understand what is happening in your mind and body and why you're not able to make that sustainable change. And so I always say that we have two minds. Our first mind, mind one, is up here, is in our thoughts. It's the conscious mind. So when you say that I am going to the gym, you're making a conscious decision to go to the gym. And that conscious thought process is really only 5% of how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, when you have a thought, like a thought that I'm not worthy or a thought that I am too fat or I'm not good enough, you're sending biochemical reactions to your body. And then your body triggers an emotion. And that emotion is your subconscious mind. It's really mind too. And that comprises really of 95% of your operational day-to-day -day living. 95%, that's a lot more than the 5% conscious mind, right? Because what happens is, as you keep having that same thought over and over again, and it becomes a belief system, it's now hardwired into your subconscious mind, body too. That feeling. So that's why when you think that you shouldn't eat that chocolate, you still feel like you want to eat it. That feeling, that emotion is an addiction and that's in this 95% subconscious mind. That's why it's so hard to change. When you want to make that change, it's hard to make it sustainable because your subconscious mind is trying to override your conscious mind. It's like, I should go to the gym, but you don't go to the gym because that subconscious mind is so hardwired. So you don't feel like going to the gym. And what happens? You don't end up going to the gym. So that desired change can no longer become sustainable for the long term. And this is why it was so important for me to show you the chart again. So you understand the concept behind what's happening in your conscious and subconscious conscious mind and you're really operating based on your subconscious mind in your body. It's that feeling. So feeling is your subconscious mind and the thought is your conscious mind. So in order to make the sustainable change, 
you have to start changing that subconscious mind mind too so we're basically living in that subconscious mind 95 percent of the time so it's really powerful stuff and what that means really is that we are living in our past right because all of that feeling has been conditioned by our past right all the past experiences and thoughts right so i created this chart to show you what happens when we're living in that subconscious mind we're really living in the past as that old person that same person so as we live in the past we have the same thoughts over and over again and those same thoughts become a belief system because belief system are thoughts to just repeat over and over again and therefore we're making the same choices in our lives and if we make the same choices then we take the same actions and do the same behaviors and then what happens we get the same results in our lives right because everything is living by the emotions of the past there's nothing new so the same results come back over and over again and therefore you're not really making a change or making a sustainable change now if we start changing that subconscious mind that feeling mind that 95 percent of the way we live we are now becoming a new person a new being we're becoming this state a new person and so a new person with new thoughts new belief system what happens that person is living in the present future and i say the present future is because our power is really in the now however we are choosing to put new thoughts in the now we're choosing to place thoughts that are empowering us right here right now we are no longer choosing thoughts of the past we're choosing thoughts that empower us for the future in this present moment so that's why i say living in present future so like i said then we're choosing new thoughts new thoughts turn into new belief systems new belief systems what happens you're making new choices and when you make new choices you're taking different actions and you're behaving differently and so then what happens you're getting new results in your life you're seeing that real sustainable change and so the key here to get the new result and to make that change sustainable is to deprogram the old self deprogram that subconscious mind to deprogram the old person into a new person into a new state of being so in order to go from the old person to the new person we have to reprogram the subconscious mind of our emotions of our feelings and we can do that through our thoughts through our conscious mind and so i want to share with you some of my mind training techniques that i do all day every day and so the first one is you're gonna take a voice recorder like this and this is like fifty dollars it's really really cheap and you're gonna record positive affirmations that make you feel powerful so i've written down a bunch of positive affirmations that make me feel powerful i've just listed them and some of the ones that i have here are here for example i am so powerful that my life has unlimited possibilities another one I am worthy beyond measure so all great things come to me another one I know that everything in my life is possible because I am that pure positive energy that creates worlds here's another one I know with absolute certainty that I can accomplish anything that I want and my life has infinite possibilities so you get the idea the idea is to write down positive affirmations and then record your voice in here and after you record it right before you go to bed you're gonna listen to it for like 15 minutes you know with a headphone and some eye shades just listen to it for like 15 minutes and just by listening to these positive affirmations over and over you're starting to 
retrain your subconscious emotional mind and do it every day for like 15 minutes before you go to bed. Now, the second mind training technique is doing verbal mantras all day, every day. So the moment you wake up in bed, you start saying positive things in your life. Like, I am so grateful for this new day. I am so grateful for my help. I feel so inspired. I'm a new person. I'm a creative person. I'm a change person. And then when you go walk your dog, you do the same powerful affirmations. You could say, I am pure positive vibrational energy of God and love. So all great things come to me. And then when you sit down for breakfast, you bless the food and you do more positive affirmations also for lunch and dinner. Or let's say you're at the supermarket and you're waiting at the supermarket line. You could do positive affirmations during that time. So the other thing is to do it while you're awake, do it while you're living, right? Because we all have to go to work. We all have to go to the supermarket. We have to pick up our children. So you want to train your mind throughout the whole day. So whenever you get a chance, even if you're at work, maybe you're taking the 10 minute break or the five minute break, you could do some powerful affirmations, put on your headphones and do some affirmations when you're taking a five minute break, you know, during lunchtime at work, or, you know, you could be sitting in the doctor's office and doing powerful affirmations at that time. And so the whole idea of doing this mantra throughout the day is to really train your mind during the times when you have to go to work, you have to go to the supermarket, you have to pick up your kids, right? Because you don't wanna just be powerful during your meditations or while you're in bed. You wanna be able to be in the state of being as you're living on a day-to-day -day basis. So doing these verbal mantras all day is a good thing. Also a great time to do is while you're in the shower. That's another great time to do it, right? Just to be in that present moment and empower yourself right here, right now. So the third technique is to do powerful visualizations during your meditation. Maybe you do a 15 minute meditation, 30 minute meditation, one hour meditation. That's a time when you could visualize very powerful things that make you feel empowered. And so during my meditation, one of the most powerful visualizations that I like to do is I like to visualize myself in like space, like deep space, like void in the void, in the deep space. And I like to visualize white light emanating out from my body, white light coming out. I feel expansive, I feel infinite, I feel empowered. So this is a visualization that I like to do. Somebody that I know likes to visualize the river because she feels that is infinite. That is powerful, that is divine. So whatever visualizations you could do during your meditations, conjure up that image and just visualize that, that expansiveness, that powerful, that infinite possibility, just making you feel powerful. Do that visualizations during your meditation. Another visualization tool you could use is by carrying these small visualization cards place yourself in an image that makes you feel powerful and you know maybe there's an image of money because money makes you feel powerful whatever the image is place yourself in that image and carry this around with you because again you want to make sure you're empowering yourself throughout the whole day not just during meditation right so maybe you're sitting at the doctor's office you can pull this visualization card and then do a visualization right there you know, or maybe you're standing in the post office line. Could pull this out, do a visualization. These cards are small and portable because again, it's about training that mind throughout the whole day while you're living, while you're at work, while you're picking up your kids from school. So these are four mind training techniques that I do in my own personal life that I think really work for my meditation and for a while I'm moving throughout the whole day. So now the most important thing to know about this mind training that it is a practice. It's a practice, which means that you must be committed to doing it every day. Even if it's like 15 minutes a day, you know, maybe you feel like this is overwhelming. So commit yourself to doing something, empowering yourself 
at least 15 minutes a day. Start with 15 minutes a day. I think everybody could put aside 15 minutes a day for themselves, right? And then as you start doing this training and you're starting to recondition that subconscious mind, then you could ramp it up to maybe 30 minutes a day. And then another couple of months later, you could ramp it up to one hour a day. And next thing you know, you're gonna be doing it throughout the whole day, the entire day. You're gonna be empowering yourself because as you keep practicing, it gets easier and easier and you're training that subconscious mind and reprogramming that subconscious mind more and more. So the momentum is picking up. So it's like climbing Mount Everest. I mean, none of us can do it in one day, right? But we do a little bit every single day and next thing you know, we've climbed that Mount Everest. So what it is, is a practice and practice means commitment. And you have to make a commitment to do it every single day and to start maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And if you're just fulfilling that goal, you're way ahead of the game. Because if you are just sitting and practicing for even 15 minutes, then that means that it's possible to do it throughout the whole day and you will get there. So be patient with yourself. It is a practice and you definitely need the commitment to want to do it. So share with me, share with me and my community what desired change you want to make in your life and how you're going to make that change sustainable. Share your experiences and story below because your story really helped me and my community at large. And if you like this video, please make sure to share it and subscribe to my channel. And now I want to make a very exciting announcement that this spring I'm going to launch my yin and yang living line of prayer beads based on my logo. You know, the crescent moon and the round sun representing me and my late sister sun. And in Chinese, the yin represents the moon and the yang represents the sun. So I'm wearing a prototype of my prayer bead. And as you can see, it's got the crescent moon and the round sun shape. And also the pendant, the charm, also has the crescent moon and the round sun shape representing yin and yang, moon and sun. And they will also come in bracelet form. And because everybody has such different personalities, I'm going to launch them with nine different paired colors. So this one is green and brown. This is red and black. I also have blue and gray. I also have yellow and green. I have pink and purple. I have coral and turquoise. And I have more colors. Like I said, nine different paired colors. And the other really important component to these prayer beads is that when you purchase a prayer bead, you will have access to a private mantra or meditation video on my website. And these videos will help you in your journey of life. There'll be videos about health, prosperity, love, you know, all these issues that arise in our life to help you in your journey of life. So a great way to support me in the future is to purchase a prayer bead. And like I said, you're gonna have access to that mantra or meditation video and that makes these prayer beads even more special. And if you wanna support me now, because you really like what I do and you find my tips helpful, you could donate to my fan funded because I use so much of my time, energy, and resources to create these videos for you. And if you wanna visit all of my spiritual and holistic living tips, just go to my website at yinandyangliving.com. Happy New Year.